What's up everybody? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I am Jess. Thanks for clicking on today's video. I have a short and sweet video for you today. I have a new weight loss challenge for you guys today. We are in a new month, April already. <laughs> um, I also have my weekly update and some words of advice that I've been learning along the way that can maybe help inspire your own weight loss journey. But before I say that, I will say I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a healthcare professional. This is just my story and my own battle with obesity and what I've been doing to rewind my health from a morbidly obese weight to a healthy weight, living keto, low carb, high protein, and putting in the actual blood, sweat, and tears to make those changes. So if you want to hear more like that, definitely hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any videos. And with that said, let's get today's video started. Okay, so it has been two weeks. I wasn't here last week. Busy week, story of my life. It seems to be my life lately, so if I don't show up, that doesn't mean I take off. I'm just busy, <laughs> and I will be back as soon as I can. So this will be a two-week update, but I also wanna conclude the last month we did a weight loss, or I did a weight loss challenge on this channel. Basically, I was going back to basics, doing keto. It was the summer slim down challenge, so I was gonna do a keto. I was gonna get some steps in. I was gonna make the changes, you know, put the effort in and like get things going again. So I, I have a fun update for you on that. So we'll start with that. <laughs> um, so I averaged, oh gosh, I, once I started walking, I made a, a daily goal on my step counter or my watch, I was gonna do 10,000 steps no matter what. Unless it was the weekend, uh, I wasn't able to get those in, but I still moved. <laughs> but being that my daughter plays select softball with its tournaments and it's just, I can't get that in when I'm in tournament mode. So, and then it, on top of that, all the other games between her regular teams and volleyball and my other daughter. So on the weekends was the only, one, only reason I made exception, but I made sure to eat accordingly. So, I was getting, as I was putting in about a three to four to five mile walk a day, it was super easy to get those steps in and, and use it in that one hour I allot to myself every morning of me time. And it was therapeutic, I, I can say, nonetheless. It felt so good to get out and just walk. The weather is getting nicer here in North Texas, so I'm not freezing. There was a couple cold days, granted. It's not quite summer yet, um, but it, the weather is nice enough to go out and just feel that breeze, get that blood pumping, get the feel goods of all the hormones from working out, and the endorphins going, and it was just, Perfect. So if I could say one thing, get out and walk. I didn't try to make a certain pace or a speed or I didn't do all that. I just went out and walked and I walked for me. And that was something that it was hard because sometimes like I want to get four miles in. I want to do it this pace and all this stuff. Not necessary. The only thing that matters is the movement. How fast, how slow, how far, all of that irrelevant. Just get up and move. And if you don't have time to do a three mile walk, do a one mile walk, you know. My husband actually works while he's at work. You know, the, his company allows everybody to go take a walk. You know, it's just part of the, the, your day. And it's something you have to incorporate. And it's something that I have been doing for a while now. And it's just a part of my new normal. So if I don't get that walk in, I feel tense. I feel stressed and all that impacts my eating. So with that said, get the movement in. And obviously if you're not one that wants to walk, go for a jog, go for a swim, go to the gym read a book, you know, do something for that time, that me time every day. Even if you can't do an hour, you can compromise on time and maybe do a half hour. You know, you have that kind of time in a day. If you don't, it means you're not planning your day with meaning, you know, like you don't, you're letting the excuses be more than your goals, you know? So it, you just have to change that mentality and make the time, you can do it. <laughs> so that was basically one of the things this month that really was a game changer for me and just that movement alone, it was great. <laughs> so on top of that, when you've done well and you're in that feel good state, you don't wanna wreck it by using, you know, the old habits that got you in the, in the doghouse in the first place, right? So it gives you that incentive to not wreck what you just did. So that means your eating choices get better. So in my case, I was sticking to keto this month and it felt great. Um, and person, or last month, I'm still gonna do keto this month as well. I feel really good right now and I don't feel restricted. I don't feel 
anything other than good, so we're gonna keep the ball rolling. But being that I did do keto all last month, it allowed me to remember all the things I love about keto, just the energy, the endless amount of energy, the the just, I get out of bed and feel good, you know, like my tummy's not upset. Like it's, it's one of those things that just feels good. And if that means I have to give up some processed foods in the meantime, or things I shouldn't have anyways, you know, why not? You know, it to, that for the chance to feel good. So with since I was going keto after being low carb and not making ke uh, ketosis a goal, um, it took a little bit for my body to settle back in. Usually my body seems to respond quicker, but this time around it seemed a little bit more sluggish. So that was like, huh, let me check with the my blood ketone monitor and see where I'm at. So I was monitoring for that first week or two. I was randomly taking, you know, when I'd wake up in the morning or, you know, maybe before I went to bed, just random times. Um, I took my blood glucose and my ketone levels. And it did take me longer to go back into ketosis this time around, but it might be because of all of my activity. Um, but that's just one of the points, or it just could be your body's kind of like, what's happening here, you know, and it takes time. So, um, but I did notice my blood glucose levels were higher than I wanted them to be. Had I not checked or I made the, the changes, you know, it wouldn't give me the insight I have for my plan for this month. So, um, but my blood glucose was like in the 90s, which for me, that's high. Um, it's not considered diabetes or anything like that, but it would, I would wake up and it'd be 92. And I was like, hmm, that's too high. That's not, it shouldn't be that high. I'm older now. You know, I don't have age on my side anymore. You know, I've been yo-yo dieting for so long, so my body's gonna be more resistant to it. So it was just a bunch of those things where it was made me more committed to the cause or to my goals, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, but by the third week or so, my, I found in, actually, let me back up. In years past, like 2019, 2020, when I was originally in the thick of it, of my journey, I noticed that when my body was losing the most amount of fat and dropping the weight, my glucose levels were in the 70 to 80 range. That was like my sweet spot that my body was like, oh yeah, and I would just, the, melt, the, the, the fat would melt away and the weight loss would just keep coming. And my ketones wise, it'd be like one-ish, was the, the number um, you know, like 1.2, somewhere in that, the, that range. So it wasn't high, but it wasn't low, just like right there. So that for me was like my sweet spot. So I knew from those, the previous years of my endeavors, my weight loss endeavors, I need to get those numbers back again. So it did take a couple of weeks to get that back in, but now I've like honed in on it and it feels good to like truly be in ketosis again. And I feel so good, that's why I'm continuing it. So for this month, I'm gonna continue my, my walk um, and I'm gonna, I, my, my watch now from, for my recommended goals after it is like 10,000. So I know I've gotta get those steps in and move my body. But then I also need to fuel my body and continue eating the keto lifestyle. So as far as weight loss goes, in the past two weeks, I have dropped another six pounds. So I am thrilled overall for the month of March, I'm down 10 pounds. Um, but as, as of the last two weeks is where I really honed in on those, the blood, the blood ketones and the glucose and getting that sweet spot. So most of that happened in the last two weeks. So I couldn't be happier than, I mean, it's like, I haven't dropped 10 pounds in a month in forever. I don't even know when the last time I've always, I've just been in this revolving door of up and down five pounds. So to actually drop 10 in a month and keep it off and keep moving forward, it's like, Thank you, you know? That also shows that it comes off, I just gotta want it bad enough at the end of the day, right? So we've talked about weight loss, we've talked about the steps and what the impact of giving that time to yourself every day. And the third thing I wanna talk about is it's a new month, so that means a new monthly challenge. I wanna to add to the Summer Slim Down Challenge. Originally I said I wanted to do it for like 90 days or get it through to summer. So I'm using the same summer slim down goals. The only thing I'm adding is push-ups. I wanna start doing push-ups again. It's a full body exercise and it's just one thing to help strengthen my core, get my arms nice and tight for the summer. You know, So I am going to set a goal of each week increasing the daily amount of push-ups I do per day. So for the first week of, of April, while I get my arms back, I'm gonna do a goal of 10 push-ups a day. And then week two, I'll do 20. Week three, we'll do 30. Week four, I'll do 40. So that means I will gradually get stronger by the end of the month, but 
it's, it's just one of those things, if I can drop and do 10 push-ups, do it. You know, it doesn't have to be in a gym setting. I can do it in my living room. I can do it in my bathroom, like whatever, just drop and do 10. You know, get the 10 in. And then next week, I'll, do, I'll find a way to get 10 in twice. So um, that's the only change I'm gonna make. That means I'm gonna continue getting my steps in and probably do, and then just add my 10 push-ups with gradually increasing through the rest of the month. And then I'm also gonna continue eating keto. And then read for my, for my social or my, my, the time I wanna hop on social media, I'm gonna read my book instead. <laughs> so I, I, I found that I'm a happier person with the least, with the least amount of social media in my life and then see how much better your life is going to be if you read a book <laughs> so that is the plan for the month of april um, i will see you again next week i'm going to try to make more of an effort to show up every week instead of like every other week lately um, because again excuses if i can make the time it helps keep me on track it keeps me focused it keeps me accountable so i also need to be showing up every monday too so my apologies uh, my apologies for my absence but i'm going to be back weekly <laughs> and i will see you at the next video i am jess let me know in the comments if you're going to continue doing the summer slim down with me and i'll see you at the next video Bye. I'm done.